Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv, and today on Tips and Tricks, I've got something really bizarre for you. Most of you would uh, would think I'm absolutely crazy for even trying this. But one of my subscribers, EC Idaho, had made a comment on one of the, uh, one of the videos that I did. And this time of year in Utah and in Idaho, it's quite cold. <laughs> And so it's hard to model anywhere but in your happy little home. And quite often because of uh, situations with space or particularly people we live with. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just, there's certain things we can't do. Today, Mad Dog Merv is going to show you though how I kind of get around that in the wintertime. So stick with Mad Dog Merv and let's check out how to get some modeling and some painting done. In the okay guys, uh, this is in the... Uh, better times, <laughs> warmer times, where I film my segment of morning coffee. And you can see my grass is dormant, and I've got some ruts, actually, from where the dogs or people have kind of been, you know, walking out here. Hopefully we can bring all this back, and you can see the steam from my dryer. Give you some idea how cold it really is. So there's frost on the cover. And there's some solid ice here on the cover. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that out someday or it might warm up, but uh, I doubt it's gonna warm up. You see, the problem is with the uh, doghouse here, well, the sun, which is behind the doghouse there, well, it just doesn't warm this area. It's in the upper 20s right now while we speak. So let's take a look at how I do some of my model painting uh, in this, uh, in this okay, wonderful so disclaimer climate. disclaimer time. I'm not recommending you do this. I'm just showing you what I do, okay? Uh, I don't want anybody to try this and have something go horribly wrong and blame me for it, okay? I'm just showing you what I do. We all know that I'm very unorthodox in what I do. Um... Okay, the word crazy can be thrown out. That's, yeah, I, I'll take that. <laughs> I'm pretty crazy in some of the stuff I do. Um, but I'm just showing you. This This is what I do. You can see. See that? Yeah, it's it's cold out here. Now, I have, and we're going to turn the camera so around So I have this here. space heater. Oh, you can see I've been spraying. <laughs> uh, not with it on, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I got a little bit of green on there. Uh, but I have this space heater. I've got a couple of different ones, and this one works pretty well. When I say pretty well, um, if it runs for more than about 20 minutes or so, it will kick the breaker in here because I've only got a 20-amp breaker for this whole place, okay? I can't really run my TV uh, DVD unit with this. And I certainly can't kick over my compressor because if I do, well, it's, <laughs> it's game over. Just trips the breaker right there. And the other thing is I can't, uh, I can't make coffee when I'm doing that. So anyway, I can run any of the three of these independently for a little bit. But uh, if I run them all together at the same time, no, it'll kick it right out. Okay, so this is what I use to um, warm okay, things up so in here. so this Sublime Green, as you can see, I, I was using it uh, a few days ago. And here it is, been sitting outside here, and it's, you know, kind of peters out, not too bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to warm it up. Now, you can put it in some, like a, a saucepan, not a sauce, so I guess it's a saucepan. Anyway, you can put it in a pan. Sorry, you can put some water in a pan, put the pan on the stove, and warm your water to like boiling. Turn it off, remove it from the heat, and put this in there. Keep an eye on it for, you know, two, three minutes, and it will warm up everything that's inside there really nice. And so you'll have a nice warm um, contents of the can. 
this is a trick that a lot of modelers have used for a long time and it works really well. Now, I don't have a stove out here. So what I do is I put it here and I'm gonna leave it here for, you know, five minutes or so. Okay, maybe a little bit longer while this, while we warm up the air just a little bit in here. But the point is you can't just leave this unattended or yeah, it's gonna blow up and it's, it's gonna be a mess in here. But anyway, so I've got that set aside. Now, what if I'm going to airbrush? So we're gonna move over here. <clears throat> Recently, I did this uh, Japanese tiger tank. Um, in fact, recently, as in yesterday. And I used two different kinds of paints. The green is an acrylic, and these are enamels. Okay. So, well, that's not going to work out too well, is it? I'm going to show you what we used here. And these are old paints, too. I mean, this is old, like, Arrow Master. Uh, acrylic. So what am I going to do? Because these are probably, I mean, they're cold and they might be, you know, extra thick anyway. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set them right here. Again, you could do the hot water in your house trick. Um, I'm just going to tell you that every time I do that, if there's certain people in the kitchen or somewhere upstairs and see me do that, I have to listen to a bunch of beep because they're, I don't know. Okay, so it's one of those things that you have to do when no one else is around usually or you're gonna get complaints or maybe you've got a domestic partner that's really, really cool about that kind of stuff, but <clears throat> a lot of us don't. So, and I don't have a stove out here. So here we are, we're just gonna let this uh, you know, five minutes or so. These I don't worry nearly as much about because this has got pressure in it and that will actually blow up and explode and all that kind of fun stuff if I leave it there for too long. Okay. Um, but you did see the results on the Tiger Tank. So I'm going to warm that paint until it's nice and warm around. And believe it or not, as warm as this gets, I mean, you're talking maybe 80 degrees at the very, very most on that paint. Um, that's if I leave it there too long. Uh, usually it's really around room temperature. Not the, not this room, but you know, what you'd have in your house. I'm just, that's kind of how it is. Then I put it in my paint shaker. So I have one of these cute little paint shakers here and I shake it up really good. Uh, that's of course after I've opened it and check and make sure it's not all dried out and whatnot. And in the case of these, because these are older paints, now this is good old Floquil. So you don't worry about that. It's just, that could be 30, 40, 50 years old and it's still gonna be good. This Aero Master, well, you guys know that that's, <laughs> that's from the 1990s-ish. So what I needed to do with that is I added a little bit of alcohol. Uh, no, not the kind you drink, but uh, yeah, let's pull this up. Uh, and I think, I think, so this is 70%, but I use that for other stuff. And I fill this back up with my 99% that I have. I have industrial strength alcohol and I use, uh, use that. So I put a little bit of that in there, mix it up really good with a, with a uh, stir stick. Okay. Let me show you my stir sticks. Okay. We're just going to be honest here. This is, this is honesty today. You know, nothing fancy. I pull one of my old brushes and I just use this end here and stir it up really good. Then I put it in the paint shaker, let it shake for five minutes or so, and load up my airbrush. Um, it's always good to have a little type of a screen, some kind of a mesh screen on your airbrush so that you don't get any kind of foreign debris or chunks in there. And load up the airbrush and uh, you know thin it the way you need to and you go to town. Didn't turn out too bad. Now you can see my flow quill there. Yeah, I have a little bit of issues with that because what I thinned that with, um, actually, I think, what did I use on that? Oh, I used my lacquer thinner. So I used some lacquer thinner to thin because that's what I thin my enamels with. Okay, I don't have any of the flow quill uh, thinner anymore. I used to, but uh, that diasol, oh, that was great stuff. But of course, I used that years ago. 
So I use lacquer thinner, folks, to thin those kind of paints. Now, on my armor sand, on my armor sand, what I did is I used my xylene. And you guys have heard me talk about xylene quite a bit. And I have a little bit of xylene left. And so I used my xylene to thin this. We're going to take you a look at it real quick. see that there's definitely some thick, you know, stuff in there. And again, yesterday, um, it was it was thick and gummy-like. I added my xylene. I stirred it up really good. And I put it in my paint shaker. And yeah. But right now, touching it... Um, you know, this paint is now room temperature. Believe, believe it or not, it's been there five minutes. Uh, before I go to use this, I'm obviously going to have to stir it up really, really, really good. Which isn't a problem. And then if I put my little screen over my, over my airbrush, uh, when I pour that in, it'll be just fine. And, you know, it sprayed okay. Turned out just fine. I did thin it, believe it or not, with a little bit of lacquer thinner. I added a little bit of lacquer thinner to the brush to get the right consistency I wanted, and it sprayed just fine. Okay, okay so we've taken this off of there, turned off our heat, and... Oh yeah, that comes out a whole lot better, doesn't it? A whole, whole, whole lot better. I was better. painting recently, um, and you can see it turned out pretty darn good. Am I going to use my polishing pads? Yes, uh, because I want it really, really smooth. Do I have to? No. This, this turned out fine. And yes, folks, I sprayed it right out here. As you can see, I got a little too close when it, was, when it wasn't on. And uh, yeah, so. Um, and you wanna see how cold it is. Yeah, it's still, um, that space heater didn't take uh, too much of the edge off out here. It's still pretty darn cold, so. Yeah, it, uh, it worked out okay. You can stand outside and do this. I've used that Tamiya uh, modified lacquer, uh, you know, heat it up really nice and uh, take it outside and spray it. it. It seems to work pretty good. Let's look at another project. Okay, these tracks, recently. these Sherman tracks, um, I went ahead and painted with my 2X primer. Same thing, uh, you know, left it on the heat here for just a, a few moments again you can do that on your stove it works really well in your stove uh you know just keep an eye on things warm up that paint and take the box right outside and just spray and there you go you've got that taken care of okay so now we're going to most of you guys spray uh, acrylics um and most of you spray new acrylics not real old crap like me um but anyway so i'm going to Mix this really good. I put it in my paint stirrer already, uh, my paint shaker, and got it all shaken up nice, even though I had just used it yesterday. Um, and you see when I, this this one actually has some, you know, chunky stuff in it, little, little bit. So that's a concern because, yeah, I might run into chunks in my paint. But what I'm going to do before I airbrush, uh, this is, I call it Bridal Veil. I don't know what the heck it's really called. Um, maybe somebody can tell me what it's actually called. But it's just, uh, I get it at the craft store. Uh, not the craft store, the uh, fabric store. I think they have it at the craft store too. But anyway, and it's just this kind of a fine mesh stuff. And I'm going to put it here. And, I mean, I could put it over my airbrush. I guess it wouldn't matter. My fingers not cooperating today. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take some of this and put it in my airbrush. Wow, I actually got quite a bit in there. Yeah, I'm not going to need all that. So, and as you can see, <laughs> I just test it out on the table here. Get the, the, the flow that I want. the needle open where I want it. It's one of the 
problems that I have with this uh, particular airbrush. Okay. Make sure I got everything back blown through. And now I'm just going to do some spraying on this paint mule. It's a jumbo. Uh, it's a resin jumbo uh, cast hull that I really just don't have a use for. So... I think I got my pressure up a little bit, but you get the idea of, of what I'm doing. Um, turn my point down a little bit. Okay. Now, I have one of these. Um, I use it when I go portable and places like that. And also, quite often, you just use it right here because it's a great holder. Uh, these are great if you're going to spray in the house because it's got this little, well, filter here. And trust me, the, the fumes still come out. So, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, you can see it, it sprayed, it sprayed fine. My problem is it's an older paint. So, uh, is there some tiny, yeah, there's some tiny little imperfections in this, but that's not because of the temperature. That's because it's, you know, a really old paint. But my point being is it's nice and cool out here. It's chilly out here. I don't think you can see my breath, but yeah, it's, it's chilly out here. And I'm still able to spray and do the projects the way I need to. Okay, and then to clean everything out, uh, that's where I put most of my 70% isopropyl, actually. Uh, as I call it, the, the crappy isopropyl I have in a container here that I use to um, clean my airbrushes. Uh, you can also use, I use Windex as well, or a, a version of Windex. And you can hear it's doing its thing in there. I should probably check my, uh, my filter to see if my filter is any good. <laughs> because <laughs> I use this a lot, <laughs> but I don't always clean it a lot. So anyway, yeah, there you go. So these, yeah, these things, if you can get one of these, uh, these are absolutely awesome. Highly recommend it, whether you're using it um, like I am, or I put it in my uh, portable kit and I use this when I go places do demonstrations at different places where I can't just you know spray out in the air like I do here so so again I'm not recommending you try this uh, because I yeah there is some danger to it obviously if you leave it sitting there on that heater it could go pop you know just saying this is how I do it this is how I still model in the uh, in the winter time here in Utah um, because I use a lot of enamels i use as you see lacquer thinner i use this this glass cleaner and it has uh, quite a smell to it um i work out here okay i might build a little bit in the house uh, i might brush paint in the house but for the most part it's it's out here in the doghouse and even with this little space heater uh this is not an insulated i mean this is a this is a tough shed you know uh that's uh, non-insulated so it's kind of cool out here. So as you can see, you know, I, I dress warm, you know, um, and you've seen before, I wear the, the Santa hat quite often just to keep my, my cranium warm, or I'll even wear one of those wigs to keep my head warm. Uh, realistically, I can't be out here all day long. Uh, you know, uh, 45 minutes, an hour, and, um, you know, because my hands are exposed to the temperature out here, uh, after a while, it just, you know, I got to go in and, and warm up a bit. So, but at least I can get some things accomplished, some modeling things accomplished. And whether you uh, warm up your paint on the stove and go outside and spray, whether you have a, uh, some kind of a structure outside, at least, you know, it's not raining or snowing on me. Uh, the wind isn't blowing on me, thank goodness, because <laughs> it'd be really, really cold then but just some kind of a structure and some kind of a heat source so uh, I don't really freeze to death. It just, you know, it's a little, it's a little chilly out here. So anyway, um, I'm a diehard modeler. Uh, I'm going to 
<laughs> one model, no matter what the, <laughs> no matter what the, uh, uh, the, the temperature, the occasion, you know, through earthquakes and floods and pandemics and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, folks, I hope this helped. Uh, some of you learn a little bit about maybe how you can model a little bit in the wintertime. So if not, well, at least you got to see how this crazy old man does it. Take care.